I'm so sorry. As, as you can tell, I'm not a comedian. I'm a comedian. <laughs> Which is French for high-functioning depressive. <laughs> it's good. I'm doing good. I hate myself, which I do, but I, I will say that if there were a self-deprecation competition, I'd probably lose. <laughs> I'm doing fine though. I know that it's not depression that defines me as a person. It's anxiety that defines me as a person. It's fun, it's like a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner bottle. They serve different functions, but they complement each other really well. <laughs> and I, I tell people I have anxiety, and most of them don't believe me because they know that 60% of anxiety disorders are actually misdiagnosed as Judaism. <laughs> It's perks. It's super easy for me to live out all those corny Pinterest mantras. You know, you've definitely seen something on Instagram, and it's like, do one thing every day that scares you, and it's easy for me because literally everything does. <laughs> and they say, life begins at the end of your comfort zone, so I am always living! <laughs> being comfortable. I went on a date last week. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was bad. <laughs> Obviously not so bad because I'm still alive. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. And when you're a woman who dates men, that's literally all you can ask for. <laughs> I just, I fucking hate the whole process. You know, it's so tedious. It, there's only so many times you can sit across from a stranger and ask the same questions back and forth. It's like, so, where were you on 9-11? It's... it's <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> and I'm a young woman in 2019. Like, I have no illusions. I know that these guys are only after one thing. My Canadian citizenship. <laughs> Thank you, exactly. I'm from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up in Canada meant I would watch a lot of foreign films, like Bring It On it was huge. And Spider-Man 2 was an incredible part of my childhood. And, and When Harry Met Sally is basically the reason why I moved to New York. I spent my whole childhood fantasizing about moving to the big city, coming to the United States. And then now that I'm here, at this juncture in history, it's like I, I finally hooked up with my high school crush, just as his superpower days are behind him. You know, we finally get together, but he's fatter than he's ever been before, and tragically addicted to opioids. <laughs> out three years ago and every single day since. <laughs> I did a show once, not, not to brag, I did a show. <laughs> and it was mostly for some reason for a group of German tourists. And uh, none of my jokes translate into German. They're all about anxiety or, or Trump or the Holocaust. <laughs> I'm, I'm like obsessed with Hitler. <laughs> It's kind of like in my blood. <laughs> and you know who else would say that? Is Hitler. <laughs> I learned a lot, like German people, it's a harsh language. When they laugh, they don't go, ha, 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 ha. They go, boo. <laughs> Which, it's fascinating. It's, a, it's absolutely the harshest of the romance languages, if any of you are pursuing a thesis in linguistics. But the good thing is, though, I just smoke enough at this point that I can <laughs> lean in and make it my entire personality. <laughs> and, and when I say smoke, it's not the stuff that gives you cancer. It's the stuff they give you if you have cancer. <laughs> 
most of my friends don't smoke weed because they're too busy drinking, which gives me the opportunity to be like, <laughs> no doctor would prescribe a medical margarita. <laughs> so uh, my problem is also the solution. I 